My dear friends, we gather today as the people of faith to perform the fraternal offices of our brother Francis, who have gone from this life to the next. We extend our most sincerest condolences to, and, and to the, the family of Francis as they indeed grieve. And as a Christian community, we come to support them, to pray and ask God to have mercy upon his soul and to seek God's mercy and God's love. My dear friends, in this season of Easter, we are given the opportunity to have great hope and great faith in the power of God's resurrection and in the power of God's life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As your faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of resurrection for our departed servant Francis also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated behind the reading. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 27 to 33. When the officials had brought the apostles into face the hedron, the high priest demanded an explanation. We gave you a formal warning, he said, not to preach in this name. And what have you done? You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and seen determined to fix the guilt of this man's death to us. In reply, Peter and the apostles said, Obedience to God comes before obedience to men. It was the God of our ancestors who raised up Jesus, but it was you who had him executed by hanging on a tree. By his own right hand, God has now raised up to be the leader and savior to give repentance and forgiveness of sins through him to Israel. We are witnesses to all this. We and the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This so infuriated them that they wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord.
Christ is risen. He who created all things and has granted his mercy to men. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist said to his disciples, He who comes from above is above all others. He who is born of the earth is earthly himself and speaks in an earthly way. He who comes from heaven bears witness to the things he has seen and heard even if his testimony is not accepted. Though all who do accept his testimony are testing to the truthfulness of God. Since he whom God has sent speaks God's own words, God gives him the spirit without reserve. The Father loves the Son and has entrusted everything to him. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life, but anyone who refuses to believe in the Son will never see life. The anger of God stays on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated. Moman, I think I see baby blue. I knew my shaggy. Most of the times growing up, I knew him as shaggy. But today, when we began this funeral, funeral mass, I called him Francis. That's his name. That's the name in which he was called when he was baptized. That name is a big name because that name is the name in which he was named after Saint Francis. I'm not sure how many saintly, how saintly he was, but the life of Saint Francis was a life in which Saint Francis being a young person, a young man in his, in his village in Assisi was a lima, was one who enjoyed life, was one who, who did a lot of things because, and he was well loved and he was well liked and he enjoyed all the things that, that was taking place that young people would do. He was called a troubadour, loving, he loved to sing, he loved to, to go out, he loved, he loved life. And then he went to the war. And having gone to the war, when he, when he came under pressure, because he had all these nice things about going to the war and being a knight, and, but when he went to the war and he realized what war was about, he came back, got sick. And it is when he got sick and was close to death that he made a commitment to God. He said to God, if you heal me, if you heal me, then I will live my life for you. At least one account of the life of Francis. In some strange way, we see many parallels with the life of Saint Francis and the life of Francis. Sometimes the name we give children, they tend to live up to that name. And so too in his life, love life, enjoyed life and did all the things that young people tend to do until the tragic end when he was diagnosed with cancer. Like Francis having gotten ill. But my dear friends, 
All is never lost. All is never lost with God. And I don't know if it was the prayers of his mother, Miss Sheila, who was powerful enough to bring her prayers being powerful enough to bring him to a place of conversion. Because I I know Bravo Hill had a lot of saintly people. Eh? Huh? Bravo Hill had a lot of saintly people, people who used to pray plenty. My grandmother, Miss Boson, down in the back road there, Sanchez. Huh? The Johns are still praying hard. I don't know if it's because he came from a praying family that came to a place of deep conversion. But my dear friends, <laughs> I can guarantee you, Francis is in a better place than you and I. Francis is in a better place than you and I. You and I still have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But the grace of God was ever present that he was able to make his peace with God. And God was able to be able to bring him to a place of salvation. And that, my dear friends, is a gift, is a grace, is the light of salvation that not many people have the opportunity to have that not many people had the, have the opportunity to have. And I must say, it was indeed a beautiful encounter when I visited him and spent some time with him. It was a beautiful encounter because here is one who is facing death. Here is one who is looking death in the eyes and, and not knowing what to do, what knowing what to say, and not knowing how to say. I myself found myself looking for words. But God gave me the wisdom and the strength to be able to journey at that particular point in time. To be able to journey through his own agony, through his own pain, to be able to listen to him, hear his confession and anoint him, and to allow him to receive Holy Communion. My dear friends, the Word of God reminds us today, God hears the cry of the poor. That those of us who have that faith in Christ, that faith in Christ, those of us who come to that faith by the grace of God, that we are able to experience salvation, not because of what we have done. And therein lies the, the difference of Christianity. Not because we have been good that we are saved. It is not because that we have been the best that we have been saved. It is by the grace and by the mercy of Almighty God. The grace and, and mercy of Almighty God in which Christ raised, was raised from the dead and in which his rising from the dead released upon us all that grace and mercy. Like St. Francis, Francis made gave his life to Christ Jesus, accepted Christ Jesus as his Lord, confessed his sins, and experienced life eternal. And that's the reading reminds us today. The reading reminds us, John reminds us that today, John says to us, anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. Anyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. And so, Today we are saddened, but there is hope. All is not lost. All is not lost. In some mysterious ways, and by the prayers of plenty of people, God's grace has been given so that he might experience the goodness and the mercy of Almighty God. And that, my dear friends, is a cause for us for a cause for us to ever be filled with joy. Because if you die at 50 or you die at 90 or you die at 100, you have to die. In. You have to die. You know, you know, I have to remind people, you know you have to die. I remind you, you know you have to die. Huh? Because some people believe they don't have to. Huh? You have to die. It's just a matter of when. 
It's just a matter of when. But more than dying is the opportunity, my dear friends, that we might die in the peace of Almighty God. That is the opportunity that, that we hope for, that we might make it right with God. And so very often, we play nearest the line. We leave it up to the very last moment, hoping that, hoping that something would happen and then we might be able to make our peace with God. My dear brothers and sisters, you are gambling with your soul. And therefore, let us today recognize the call that God has placed on our lives. Like St. Francis, who made a commitment to God in his youth. After having experienced that illness, changed his life and became one of the most celebrated saints in the Catholic Church. He became one of the most noted saints, so much so that Pope Francis says, I want to be like Francis. I'm calling myself Francis. My dear friends, all of us too, all of us too can experience God's grace and God's mercy and God's love. Like St. Francis, all of us can come to a place of conversion and live our lives in a way that can bear witness to Christ and that can be fruitful to so many others. Whether we live or we die, Christ is able to use us for his glory and for his honor. A life lived for Christ, a life lived for God, a life lived in God is never a life wasted, but it's only a life that is filled with blessings. It's only a life that is filled with hope. It's only a life that is filled with God's grace. In and through whatever we may go through, in and through whatever we may go through, but we are able to go through it, keep my dear brothers and sisters, with greater faith, greater strength, and greater hope. Because in, that, in those moments, in those moments when you are facing death, in those moments when you have nothing to hold on to, in those moments when you realize it's you and God and the end is there and you have nothing to look towards, nothing to see, nothing to hold on to, all you have is Almighty God. All you have is Almighty God. Our brother Francis came to that recognition in the last days. And he held on to his God with, with all that he had. Because he knew there and then that there was hope in this God. He knew there and then that the God to whom we serve, the God who, who, who died on Calvary's cross, but was raised up on the third day, that offers all of us an opportunity to have life and to have hope and to have, and to have his strength and grace. This God is the God to whom he recognized that can save him from the dead. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 says, without God, the people have no hope. And I can tell you, my dear friends, without God, you have no hope. You have no hope. You have no hope, nothing to believe in, and nothing to hold on to. Nothing to grasp. Nothing that you have to overcome the challenges that you confront on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, as we journey with many persons in life, as I journey with many persons in life, everybody will have problems. Everybody will have problems. Whether you're Christian or not Christian, whether you believe in God or don't believe in God, you will have problems, you will have sicknesses, you will have trials, you will have tribulations. But I can tell you one thing, men and women who have faith in God and who believe in his power to save and redeem, they treat with their own trials differently. There's an inner strength and a peace that they have that they, can, that they are able to overcome the trials and the tribulations that they will face. Because as the old people say, what a meet you? Huh? What a meet you pass you, you know? What a meet you pass you? So the troubles are sure to come. Jesus says, know for sure that the troubles are sure to come. But when they come, make sure that you are standing on the rock. 
The troubles are sure to come, but when they come, make sure that you have what it takes that you might be able to withstand the troubles that will come your way. And what you need is, is, is not more money. What you need is not more fame. What you need is not more cars or big houses. What you need to be able to withstand the troubles that will come your way is a firm belief in Christ Jesus. A firm belief in Christ Jesus enables us, my dear friends, to overcome all that we may undergo. And that is why we are able to gather today as a people of faith, a people of faith, faith in the resurrection of Christ, it's as we're in the season of Easter. Faith in the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection that gives us hope. Gives us hope over and against the finality of death. A resurrection that corrects us. That gives us hope and says to us, this is not the end. This is not the end. But there is more to life. That death does not hold us down. But there is more to life than this. That the one who has been risen from the dead, he too will raise us from the dead on the last day. That's our hope. That's our hope and that's our faith and that's our trust. But my dear friends, we must be able to be assured of this in the faith that we put in the one who has been raised from the dead, Christ Jesus. And once we are able to put our faith and trust in him and persevere in that faith and trust in him, all will be well. All will be well. All manner of things will be well for the one who trusts in Almighty God. And so today we give God thanks for the gift of our brother and for the time that he was with us. We give God thanks for the gift and the life of his, his the ways in which he has shared with us and the ways in which he has touched the lives of others in his own, in his own particular way. We ask that God, who is ever merciful and kind, will look down upon him with that mercy and with that kindness. Not because he was perfect, not because he was sinless, not because he did everything according to God's commands, but because of the mercy of God that knows no end. It is this mercy that we, that we turn towards today as we trust our brother to the grace and mercy of Christ that Christ indeed will look upon him in his mercy and grant unto him life eternal. As John reminds us, those who believe in Christ have eternal life. Our brother believed, professed, and confessed Christ. We can be assured that he too has eternal life. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand for the intercessions. God, the Almighty Father, has raised Christ, the Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For our brother Francis, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted into the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. We pray in, as well for his family and for his friends. Special way, we recall all his siblings, uh, who, especially those who are not present here. Monica and Angela, Jermaine and Neil, Judy, we pray in a special way and we ask that God will give them strength and hope for his nieces, for his nephews, 
all his, rel his relations. We ask, O oh God, that as they grieve, that they may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, that they may be consoled by God's love, and that they may find hope in the resurrection of Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the many persons who are suffering with cancer. We lift them up before Almighty God. So many of our friends and family continue to, to have to fight the scourge of cancer. Lord, we pray that your healing hand would be upon the many who are going through this own, their own trials. Lord, that they would not give up faith and hope, but that they would trust and believe in your saving power, in your healing goodness, that you will grant unto them the grace of perseverance and the grace of strength. Lord, we pray that you grant the doctors and the nurses the wisdom that they need, that they may come up with cures and ways that, that can, can bring about healing of this disease. Lord, hear us. And we pray, Heavenly Father, in a special way for all of our sick brothers and sisters, the shut-ins and, and those who are suffering. We lift them up before you, Almighty God. Look down upon them with mercy and love. Stretch forth your healing hands and touch them so that they, O oh Lord God, will experience your healing goodness and your healing mercies. Lord, hear us. And we pray, Lord God, for the conversion of sinners. We ask, O oh Lord God, that your grace, which always wins against sin, and, we, and, and your grace that always conquers, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you will continue to knock on the doors and the hearts of your people, even until up to the last moment, that they may surrender and accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray that you will continue to pursue them as the hound of heaven, that you will continue, Lord God, to look, to look for them, to search them out, that the grace of God will touch their hearts, their souls, their entire being, and that they, O oh Lord God, will surrender to you and find in you their peace, their happiness, and their joy. Lord, hear us. We pray in a special way for all of us who are assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. A collection will be taken up for the parish of St. Francis.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Francis may be taken up in glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. To Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he has betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Jason our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Francis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Sparance, Vincent, and Sheila. And all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Thou the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Francis and all the saints, so please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Our oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, as we unite our hearts in prayer, we pray the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we know we be free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Be mindful that we don't touch anyone.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am weary that you should have charged my way. But only say the word, my soul shall be My dear friends, for those who are practicing Catholics and are coming for communion, please remember to keep your face mask on. Someone will offer sanit hand sanitizers. After having sanitized, you are invited to come to receive communion. After having received Holy Communion, remove your face mask, consume, and return to your pew.
solace I can have you are my heart's desire there is everlasting joy never ending peace here all the time Let us pray. God, Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant, strengthened by it, our brother Francis may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We now come to the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Francis, and now we come to the last hero. There is sadness in party, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Francis again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our brother Francis into the short city hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestow upon Francis in this life. We are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Mercifully, Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever and ever. Because God has chosen to call our brother Francis from this night to himself, we commit his body to the earth. For we are dust, and to dust we shall all return.
I just want to say hi to Auntie Bernice, Monica, Angela, Ricky, Talia, Tishel, and everyone, Nikisha.
guys, we know it's hard, but God is in control. We will survive. God is good. And Francis did receive the Holy Spirit before he died. Francis is in a better place. It's hard. We're feeling it, but we know God is in control. I ask you guys to stay strong. Let us continue to love and understand one another and to be there for one another. We're just asking God to let His Holy Spirit flow through us. In Jesus' name, Amen.